Hello Jaguars, Mr. Grawl here. Now we're going to do the famous Windows Vista project. And in this project you're going to learn some of the following things. You're going to learn how to work with the interactive fill tool, how to shape simple objects, how to trim simple objects, how to create a glossy button. The skill level for this is intermediate. You're no longer beginner's class, you're now at intermediate level. Besides these tools, you're going to also learn how to work with the interactive, I believe it's called the transparency tool. Let me check on that. The interactive transparency tool where you can fade something going from opaque to transparent. And uh, so with no further ado, let's take a look at it and analyze it. Well, we've got a circle. We can do that. And we've got a, another circle here, and it appears to be either a gradient or a blend going from a light blue to a dark blue. I believe we can do that. Up here we have a discrete shape. I'm not sure if I'll do that, but uh, we have a highlight up here. And then we have four sets of windows of different colors, each having a highlight and gradating to something darker. And one of these is replicated here, and then these are flipped twice, right to left, and then up and down, or 180 degree rotation. So I believe we can do this. Let's zoom out. Let's zoom back into here and get to work. So before we even begin, let's build our palette. And in fact, in order to do this, I think I'm going to get a new, new file up here because I've already built a, a palette over here. So we've got a new file. And to build a new palette, what I do is I just get a test shape here, give it a color, and go to Object Properties and go to Edit. Now, actually, before I start, I have to check what kind of palette I have. It says CMYK, which is cyan, magenta, yellow, black. I'm going to cancel out of here and see what my palette is. My palette is the CMYK palette. I think I'll exchange this for a Windows color palette, the RGB palette. And here it is over here. So let me pull this out and start adding some colors to it. So let's go to edit. Now to do the button, I'm going to need a bunch of blues. I'm going to stay right within this family right here. And I'm going to need a, a light one. I'm going to add this to palette. Can you look over here and see I've added it to the palette and I'll get another blue and add to palette a very solid blue add to palette we've got three over here now let's go and get some darks add to palette add to palette add to palette and I believe we've got enough we've got one two three four five six blacks now for the windows that we're gonna make we're gonna need two of each now let's say we have a red window so we'd want a local red we'll add that to the palette and then we'd want a dark red maybe something right around here we add that to the palette we would probably want a green we'll get a local local green color here we'll add that to the palette and then we'll go down here in the same family of greens but we'll get a shade here and we'll add that to the palette so we have blue red and greens. Let's get some goldens, golden type colors right in around here. So let's get a golden color here and we'll add that to the palette and let's get a shade of that. Let's move down to about here. We add that to the palette. So we have red, green, we got some blues and why don't we go ahead and get some oranges. So we'll get a orange we'll add that to the palette and then we'll go for a dark orange and add that to the palette so oops I didn't add that to the palette let me try that again and actually I don't let me do this again let me get this orange add to palette and then let me move down here add to palette so we'll use these two that's the first thing you do is you build your palette so you have your colors up front right away and there's two other things you should do up front right away and that's with nothing selected you should make your duplicate distance up here zero 
I'm going to go ahead and do that. So when you do a duplicate, that it doesn't offset. Let's set our nudge values. I'm right-clicking on the ruler, and your nudge value should be as precise as you can get, which is one thousandth of an inch. I'm adding two zeros here. Super nudge, when you hold on shift, could be 20 times greater than your nudge. And I have 30 there. I'll make it 25. How's that? And I'll say OK to that. I'm ready to begin working. I'm going to start with a circle, and I'm going to hold down Control to constrain that circle. And I'm going to go with the deep blue. Uh, let me drag this out so I can see what colors I, I created. OK, we started with this deep blue here. All right, great. Now, the reason I want the duplicate dis distance to be zero, because I'm going to do a duplicate right now. Control D. And holding down Shift, I'm just going to push this in. Whoops, I don't have Shift down. Here we go. Holding down Shift does it from the center. And you can see that line there. And we'll just go to our next color right here. So I've got, uh, for the back, i got this deep blue and then a little bit um, lighter blue here. Now, I'm going to do uh, another one here, but it won't be a circle. It's going to be kind of a, an ellipse here. And I'm going to add the light blue, maybe this one. Now, let's get rid of the lines. Now, if we zoom in, we can see that there, there is a line here. And they all have lines. Let's get rid of them. So let's select them all and go to Object Properties. Click on the line icon and we'll say None. Now, if you don't have your Blend Docker up here, I already have it. Everything is under Window, Dockers, and you can see Blend is checked. I already have it, so I won't check it again because it would take it away. Now, when you click on one thing, this command is not available. But if you hold on Shift to add to the selection, Apply becomes available. I'm going to do a blend of just three, show you what it looks like. So I have the original, one, two, three, and then the thing I'm blending into. And I'm not sure I'll use these colors. I'm going to ramp it up a little bit to maybe 10 and apply it. Let's try 20 and apply it. Let's ramp it right up to 50 and try that. I like that. I'm going to go with that. I have a smooth gradation here. Now the next thing I would like to do is have this highlight up front. Now on the one that we looked at it was discrete and I think I'll make this kind of smoky. Discrete means hard edge and I want kind of a feathered edge. I'm going to go ahead and delete this again. Uh, not delete it but to duplicate it. Control D. And to bring it to the front I'm going to do a shift and then hit page up to bring it to the front. I am going to turn it white. It's going to be a highlight shortly. And then I'm going to hold down shift and grab a corner handle and shove it in. And I'll bring it back to the edge here. And what I'd like to do is trim just the top of it. I'm going to use a, a rectangle to trim it. And I'm trimming is a shape docker command. It's right here. I don't need the source. The source is the thing that's originally clicked on. The target is the thing I'm going to click on. I don't need to keep that either. I just want the trimmed object. And there it is. Let's zoom in. Now I want this to fade to transparency. And I didn't write that down, but it's one of the tools I want you to learn about. And it's right here. It looks like a champagne glass. Probably because we're talking about transparency glasses. Transparent. Interactive transparency tool. Let's hold down Control and drag it straight down. Control constrains it to five degree increments, and I want to move it straight down. Let's talk about this control. White keeps the, op the opacity at 100%, and as you move towards black, it becomes more and more transparent. So if you pull this further down, uh, more of this op opacity would kick in, and anything on the other side of this will be transparent. Everything to that's underneath it will be transparent. So if you pull this out, the more opaque it'll become. And so I want it kind of feathered and soft here. Now, same with this. Now I have control down. I don't want to move right or left. I just want to move up or down. So if I brought this down, everything would be opaque straight up until it got here, and then it would um, do the, the blend. Uh, into transparency. So I'd like to pull this back. I'd actually like to pull it back a little bit more so there's some a transparent effect there. Let's go ahead and zoom out and take a look at the total effect. Great. We have kind of a re reflective button here. 
Now the next thing I'd like to do is put some text on this. So I'm going to go ahead and come back here and do another Control D to duplicate. Bring it to the front, Shift page up. And I am going to hold down Shift and push this in. Now what I'm trying to do here is I'm going to be putting text on this and I want to figure out exactly how big I want this because the text is going to wrap around like this. And I think I'll leave it right here like this. Uh, so this is going to be my path for the text. I'm going to go out and type some something here. Let's make the default size a little bit bigger, maybe about 100. And we're going to type out in all caps, Windows Vista. And I didn't do that in all caps, did I? Try it again. Windows Vista. There we go. And uh, let's make it bold. Let's look up here and make it bold. And not sure what color I want to use. Um, let's see. What color do I want to use? Yellow, white. Let me do a control W. I think I have an artifact here. Yes, I do. That little white box didn't really exist. It was an artifact. And control W will get rid of any artifacting by redrawing your screen. Um, we'll try this. And let's see if these letters will fit in here. Maybe a little bit. Well, I'll leave them. So I have the letters selected. And I'm going to go to text fit text to path. It gives me a little arrow. It's asking me what path do I want to. This one is fine. So there's our Windows Vista. Now to separate this, right now it's grayed out. It says um, break apart and it's grayed out. Why? I have to select the thing it's attached to. So I'm going to hold down shift and now I have Windows and the path selected. Now I can go to range and it says break text apart. Let's do that. Now, you've got to deselect, and then you can just take this and delete it. It's separated from here. Now, this highlight, let's bring this to the top, shift page up so it's on top of this. You can barely tell the difference. You might be able to tell it better if this letter was black. Let's change it back to black. I don't know if you can tell or not. Let's. Oh, actually, you know what? I changed the highlight to black. Let's undo that. And let's try to click on the Vista and turn that to black. Now you can see that it's kind of glossy underneath here. And I'm not sure what color I want the Windows Vista to be. I'm going to have to play around with some color choices and decide what I want. I guess for now I'll leave it at black. I think a drop shadow would be nice. Let's see if I can pull that off. Probably not. Because I have a hard time with drop shadows. And I'll give it a shot. There it is. Can you see it? I'll release it. Now that drop shadow is not very well defined. It's overly feathered. So I'm going to come up to the feathering tool here and shove this in. There, that looks better. And I just got to decide where I want to place this. And I'm struggling here with the tool. Um, you know what I think I'll do? Let me undo that. Control Z. If, if, can I break this apart? Yes, I can. Break, shadow, group apart. Let's break it apart. Because it is, why it's attached, it's kind of hard to, to work with it. Now I can move it around wherever I want. It's broken from its attachment to here. So, But I need to see it. And I can't. Let me try it again. Now I can see it. Let's put it right about here. Good. Let's uh, go ahead and zoom out a little bit and see what we've got. It's coming along good. Let's build the um, Windows uh, colored flags or windows or whatever you want to call them. Let's go ahead and make a box here. Let's zoom in. And let's start with a um, let's start with a yellow one. I'm going to get rid of the line right away, right-clicking on the X. 
And there's two things you have to do before you can begin modeling this. First of all, you have to break the programming. Right now it's programmed to do that, which is cool. But we don't want it to do that. So we go to Arrange, Convert to Curves. Now it doesn't do that anymore. Good. The next thing, if we get our Shape tool to try to reshape this, doesn't happen. What do, what do we got to do? We got to select all the Bezier nodes. When they're selected, they get enlarged or they become bold like this. And I'm going to click on this icon. And you need to make note of this because I'm going to test you on it. It's called Convert Line to Curve. This will allow us to model the lines. I'm clicking on it now. And the change that has taken place is that now we can model with this. Great. Now this is getting a little bit too, too much. So I'm going to take this Bezier curve and bring it in here. And then come back here and model this a little bit more. And that'll be it. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this and duplicate it. Control D. I'll change the color of it. And I'm going to drag this down. This the purpose of this one is simply to trim the other. So as I yank this down, place it right about here. And this one's going to trim this one. This is the source. Let's go to our Shape tool. Uh, I'll put this up here for the time being. Let's go to Shaping, Trim. And what do I want to trim? I want to trim the yellow one with the green one. So click on the yellow one. That's the target. Boom. Got it. Coming along nicely. Let's do a gradient on this. Here's our gradient tool at the very bottom. It's called the Interactive Gradient Tool. I'm going to go from side to side, holding down Control. Now, what I want is a highlight in the highest point here. I'm going to double click. I'm going to bring a highlight in here. I need local color here and local color here. Let's bring our palette back out. And we mixed up a local color right here. If this has a double box around it, you can just click here. And here I want my highlight. That'll be white. Over here, I want the local color once again. And on the back end, some shading, the darker color. And there we go. Let's push this up a little bit and duplicate it. Control D. And we will work our way around pulling down, holding down control to constrain it. I'm going to come up here. And I am going to go back to our interactive fill tool. And this color, we could uh, perhaps make it green. We did mix up with local color green here, local green here. For the back end, a deep green, a shade of green. And we're done there. And let's grab these two. And so we don't bump into our button. We'll move them down a little bit. And we'll zoom back in here. Let's go ahead and duplicate. Well, let's deselect and just grab this one and duplicate it. Control D. Let's hold down Control and move it over. And I'm going to click again and do a rotation, 180 degrees. Now to make sure it snaps in the right place, I'm going to hold down Control. I'm going to undo that actually and show you what I did again. You click once, you get handles for resizing. You click again, you get these rotation handles. So a double click or two clicks, and that's your center rotation. That's fine. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this, and to have it snap in place, I'm going to hold down Control. So every 15 degrees it snaps. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead, and I could have used the transform box over here. I could have plugged in 180 here. 180 and I could have applied it. Okay. It's like a double flip up and down and right to left. That's what 180 is. It's a double flip. Great. Okay. Let's drag it down. I'm trying to get I'm holding down control. I'm trying to get this line so it kind of swings up into this one. Let's go get our interactive fill tool. And actually, I want the highlight over here. Actually, you, you know what? I want to swing the whole thing around. Let's see if I can do that. I'm going to swing this over to here and this over to here. And I'm going to hold on control to try to straighten it out. Great. And so I got my highlight on, on the right. I didn't want my highlights being so close together. And I got to decide where I want my shadow, though. And I think 
I want my shadow on the other side. So I'm going to do local color here. And let's do a different color now. Let's do um, let's do this one. Okay. And actually, no, wait a minute. Local color goes there. Let me think for a minute. Let's try the deeper color. And let's do local here. If we don't like it, we'll change it. And we'll do a local color here. See how it looks. I guess that'll be alright. And let me bring this up a little bit. There we go. Control D to duplicate this. Holding down Control, I'm going to drag it down. Get the interactive fill tool. And what are the colors that we we can go ahead and do a Oh, let's see. What other colors do we have here? We did green, red. How about orange? We'll do an orange. So here's local orange. Here is local orange. And here we'll make a shade of orange. Or this color. Or this one. Which one do I like better? I guess I'll go with uh, this one. Hmm. Orange and red together. You know what? I think I'm going to go for blues. Let me go for blues. Since we got blues here. We'll do a local blue here. We'll do a local blue here. We'll do a shade of blue here. You just can't please everybody, right? Let's grab all this and group it. Control G. Let's give it a drop shadow. I'm going to click right here in the corner of this and drag it down. Oh, I didn't get it. Let me try again. There we go. There's our drop shadow. It's too fuzzy. I'm going to come up to the little feather tool here. It's at 15. I'm going to drag it down to maybe about 3. There we go. And I'm going to move this back into place. There we go. Click on this tool. And there's our windows. Let's zoom out. And put this in here like so. Maybe we've got to shrink it up a little bit. And maybe to complete the project, we'll make a box, like a frame. Let's, since we're fairly happy with this, let's go ahead and group it. Control G. And we'll make a box around it like so. Not sure what color we'll use. Maybe we'll try blue. Let's send it to the back. Shift page down. Whoops. Shift page down. Let's round the handles. Let's go to Object Properties and increase the line. And let's grab the whole thing and center it. Arrange, align and distribute, align and distribute. Center, center, apply, close. Let's group this, arrange group. And let's zoom in and admire our work and there's the windows vista project i thank you very much for listening to me and we'll see you in class god bless class bye bye